Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Trust and Believe. Today, I always say you're in for a treat, but today you're in for an extra special treat because the amazing person I'm going to have on today's podcast was actually referred to me by one of my clients that lives in the UK. And I got a DM one day and she said, hey, you should check out this amazing woman, Liz Josephsberg, because she inspires me and she's amazing. And I know you are all Get along so well. So today, welcome Liz Josephsberg, who is a health, wellness, and weight loss expert, and she's been doing so for over 16 years. And in addition to that, she has a book called Target 100, and I'm going to peel out all the information I can from her today. I'm going to find out what all the clients find out from her, because you know, even I've been in health, the health and fitness industry for years, you know, I can use a little tips. We can all continue to be a student. What's up? You better than Oprah. Come on, y'all. This is Sean T, and it's time to trust and believe. Without further ado, Liz, welcome. Oh, Sean, thank you. What a special treat this is for me today. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to dive right in because I have so many questions for you. I'm I'm going to put this in there. If you come closer to the camera, this is selfishly for me, this podcast, a little bit. I want everyone else to learn something. But before we get into weight loss and health and wellness, I always like to find out what made you want to get into the industry of helping people. Yeah, well, you know, I actually had a weight issue my entire life. I was overweight by the time I was about 12. I was in a first diet by the time I was 14, uh, and I struggled with it for my entire life. I actually became a professional actress uh, and was a Broadway. I have a master's degree in opera, and as you can imagine, a lifetime of a weight issue while you're an actress is really like so emotionally debilitating, and physically, it was difficult. I went through many like crazy diets and I eventually you know 30 pounds turned to 50 pounds turns to a 65 pound weight loss that I had to to uh, accomplish and I just felt like wow I want to help other people achieve their goals and know that they're not alone and tell them that um you know, some of the stuff they've been taught out there is just not right and it's just not true and that there's nothing wrong with them. Um, in fact, everything's right with them and we can leverage those things to have success. What's really fantastic is just like so many other health and wellness coaches I know, they got into the industry because of their own personal, I want to say struggles, but their own personal success. And that I absolutely relate to. I actually got into the industry because I lost 50 pounds. So we kind of relate on that level. But I think what's more important is that when you have someone who can go through the emotional journey with you and understand where you're coming from, you know, people relate to you better. So tell me a little bit more about your approach to really connecting to people as they come to you for support and guidance. Well, so I have this really long history, right, in the weight loss industry from personal to professional, right? Once I realized I, I wanted to lose, you know, weight for the final time, I, it was after getting married. I went to Weight Watchers. I ended up going there as a client and started working my way up through the company, ended up as their celebrity weight loss expert. I was helping people like Jennifer Hudson and Jessica Simpson, Charles Barkley, Katie Couric. I'm flying all over the country helping people right writing weight loss programs for Weight Watchers. Then I ended up kind of leaving there, jumping off and starting my own uh, company. And I, I actually started working around the world in weight loss, everything from devices and technologies to um, places like Lifetime Fitness, um, places like United Healthcare, uh, so that I could get an inside view on what was going on behind the curtain at all kinds of weight loss. So I wasn't a Weight Watchers expert, but a weight loss industry expert. That was very important to me. I also went back and became a personal trainer. Uh, I got a nutrition exercise specialty because I wanted to come from all angles. 
And just by the way, I want to thank you personally because uh, as a child who was overweight, uh, it's kind of a, a really punishing thing to be overweight and feel like you're not a fit person. Right? I mean, I can still remember having to run the mile uh, and being the last one to cross the finish line and being embarrassed and ashamed. So I grew up not believing that I was fit. And I'm going to tell you, your insanity program changed my life. I can't tell you. And it really, it's, and I'll tell you to this day, I still do the 47 minute max cardio conditioning all over the world. I'm not kidding. That's like my favorite workout of all time. Oh. I have done it. My husband and I have done it in countries around the world, in in hotel rooms. But I want to thank you for helping me to change my identity and know that I was a fit person. I think of myself as like athletic now after all these years, right? So this journey of learning, right, all the way through these corporate situations into writing my own book after all of this experience, um, I went and researched, you know, and looked into why were people losing weight and then regaining it? And why mm. was it that there were people that could lose it and keep it off? And so Target 100 is my approach. I learned that not only is is sort of the weight loss industry broken that that weight loss is really not about food at all yes it's about food but i've never met a person who was trying to lose weight who would say to me oh i just don't know what the smarter choice is should i have a salad with grilled chicken or should i have fettuccine alfredo i don't know no they know what to eat mm -hmm. but it was always that gap between action and intention and i was like mm -hmm. what is that gap so I started studying habit formation and understanding that up to 50% of what we do in a day is just habit. And we're not even conscious of the triggers that are sending us through these routines that we are repeatedly doing, even thought routines, right? It doesn't even have to be a physical trigger. It could just be, you know, negative thought patterns that we have that are triggering us to overeat or to not prepare or to do the things that actually create success. So once I realized like all of my past diet attempts had been practice for discovering that there is actually real brain science behind the success of people who lose weight and keep it off. So I think my approach is it's holistic. I don't believe it's just about food. If you can't incorporate hydration, movement, exercise, stress, and sleep, so there are six mm. things in my book that we cover because this isn't just about you changing your food intake or asking someone to give you a diet plan, but about assessing your life in a 360 degree view and really t finding the things that work for you, finding your Shanti, finding your insanity, finding the things that make you want to get up and do that exercise. So I really help people from the perspective of having done it myself, doing it still every day. I think that's a big piece is it's not like I get to wake up and and keep my 65 pounds off. Like I have to consistently be assessing my own lifestyle, my own habits and my own behaviors. If that, if that makes sense. It makes total sense. I think one of the most profound things you said now, I want to get into some more specifics again later, but I talk a lot about before the before. And one of the most profound things you said is attempts there were a lot of attempts to lose weight. There were a lot of attempts to become healthy. And I think that's where I want to go to right now is if we can go to the psyche of the person who is listening that is in the place of the constantly attempting, but they can't reach that. And I love how you said this. They can't reach those habit forming changes that happen every day because I was actually assessing my daily you know routine I'm like okay I get up I spend time for myself I try to go to bed early at night in addition to that this is what I drink this is what I eat this is what I try to do and then I was also assessing like well what could I change how could I get you know a little leaner so with talking about those habit forming changes or before we go there what is happening to the person right now who's saying I want to do this. I want to do this, but it can't, they can't get out of the, I want to do this. Yeah. So this is the most fascinating thing that I learned, especially really interesting to me is, so I'll say one thing first about the attempts and I, I just love the attempts. 
if you're in the, mm. like if you're listening right now and you're in an attempt like go you like whether it pans out to be the way you thought it was going to be or it isn't the way you thought it was going to be you're still in the freaking arena right like mm. you're in there fighting it out you're in there getting dirty you're getting into these ideas so first of all pat yourself on the back for that the thing that I can tell you is happening for most people, if you're like me, um, we learned through um, a system of what, what the diet industry and the attempting industry is. First of all, they're looking for our dollars. So they're not building you um, some things that are going to really help you. Um, a lot of these companies are building things that they know won't help you and will send you through an endless cycle of these attempts, right? So they're, you really want to be very choosy about where you spend your dollars and where you spend your attempts, right? On top of that, the um, industry of uh, of weight loss in, in very specific is built on guilt and shame. Mm. So if, um, and what we know now about the brain is that if you feel those emotions of guilt and shame, like perhaps you didn't do it perfectly, um, that it actually highlights the reward center in your brain and you go do exactly what it was that you didn't want to go do like eat more food or if gambling is your thing you actually go gamble more when you're losing because you feel badly about the loss so we know that's happening and what i think everyone's learned and if i can really impact even one person listening right now is eradicating the guilt and shame. So I used to see these women come in to Weight Watchers and they would have you know, spent a week attempting to do the program and doing it well and then they'd step, you know, right before you step on a scale, like anybody who steps on a scale in front of another human, they become like, it becomes like a confessional and they just oh. start like talking to you and they would get there and they would say, oh my God, Liz, I had this great week and I don't know, I, I was doing so well and then I went to a party and I ate too many points and then I felt so terrible that I overate for the rest of the weekend. And it was like this thing I would hear over and over and a thing I had done, which is if I had a perceived mistake, I felt guilty and shameful, so I went and I quit. So I think that when you ask about those attempts, if you can look back and if you can eradicate perfectionism, if you can really look back and go, wow, there probably was a moment where I thought I'd done something wrong, so I threw in the towel. I'm telling you, there is no wrong as long as you're trying. And, and, and the attempts, whether you're really in it or you're kind of fading out of it, which we all do. That's the other natural part of, of any sort of health and wellness program is there are moments in my year, I, I've identified the end of August and the end of December are often quite like free flowing for me. You know, I'm putting yeah. a couple pounds <laughs> back on. I'm, I'm not exercising as much. I'm traveling. I'm drinking more wine. You know, I'm so that's okay. An ebb and a flow is okay. Um, don't ever feel like you're out of it or throw that towel in and understand that any any time you're attempting to, you know, I, I look back and I know that all of my attempts taught me something, whether it was, you know, oh, wow, I did learn something about food or, oh, wow, I did learn um, I'm stronger than I thought I was or, oh, wow, sleep does impact my eating patterns. That's amazing. Then you're learning and so just don't take that from yourself. Stay positive, drop perfectionism, and especially drop guilt and shame because it's just going to drive you to do the things that you don't want to do. It's going to highlight that reward system. I have to tell you a story because I actually just did exactly what you were talking about yesterday, meaning I didn't focus, I didn't let the guilt and shame win. Now, this is for people out there who may be listening where they are in that that struggle of the attempts, which I love how you congratulated them because that still means you're fighting through it. But just a really interesting story. So yesterday I had a very busy day. My body was extremely exhausted from developing my new dance program that I'm putting out. So if you dance, hopefully you'll be able to dance with me uh, yes. soon. <laughs> That's fun. But uh, but I had tennis practice. And I don't go tennis for leisure. I go because I want to get better. I want to win a tournament one day. And during practice yesterday, nothing was working right. So then I realized... I'm like, you're not, you're missing two steps. So in tennis, it's like you have to run to the ball. But if you, if you don't miss two steps and set yourself up for success, 
no matter how you hit the ball, it's just not going to be clean or it's going to go far. It's, your shoulder's going to drop or your core is going to give out and you're going to be unbalanced. And I was really having a tough time. I was having such a tough time. And I was just like, this is so annoying because I know I'm better than this, right? Which is what a lot of people say to themselves when they're on a weight loss journey. So my coach says, hey, let's just sit down and take a break. And I said, let me take, let me do two more drills. I was like, because I need to mentally prove to myself that I'm going to stay in the game. Because if I would have stopped at that moment, it would have been like throwing in the towel. And so we did two points and I felt really, really great. And then we sat on the bench and I got back up and I said, hey, I'm going to be so good in this next section. I was maybe like 40% good. I still, I still was extremely tired. I was, and I want people to think about this as they're thinking about their weight loss journey. You're doing it. You're doing the best you can, but you're still not necessarily succeeding in a place that you want. But I didn't mentally, I said, I'm going to focus on what I want and stop focusing on what I don't want. Because I, you know, I was just like, am I focusing too much on what I don't want to happen when I hit the ball? So then I'm not moving forward. I'm not committing. I'm not being aggressive enough. So we sit down on the bench and it was our time. We play points at the end to like match play. And I went out there and I played unbelievable. And I know that I attested to that no matter how hard the struggle was or the journey was, I was going to tell myself, stay in it, stay relaxed, focus on what you want and don't throw in the towel. And I and I just appreciate you sharing the story of the person that's with the psyche of the person that's going through the struggle, because it you can utilize that in other areas of your life, especially when you, Liz, were talking about your habits, everything you do in all of those other areas in your life, they completely impact your weight loss as well. And so um, thank you for opening that up because it allowed me to express it. But speaking of expression, you know, what are some of the signs that people or some of the things that people can do kind of during the day that will keep them in that habit zone, you know, that you've noticed that help works for some of the clients that you mentor? Yeah. And I think just to take it into a really um, concise expression of like what it means to form habits that will lead to weight loss, um, you know, as I say, no one ever had a problem with what it was. Is it a Snickers bar or an apple? I'm not sure which is better. No. Um, but do you consistently at night get tired, sit on the couch, get triggered by television, television commercials, and then eat after dinner? Okay. That behavior mm. is leading to your weight gain, not the magical, oh, I ate an apple. It's the behavior. So I always say behavior over time equals results. So we look at your behavior, okay? And are you consistently, I always love the example of eating after dinner because those extra calories, especially once the, the, the light goes down, we all turn into werewolves and we can eat everything in the house, right? Like we all know yeah. this. I know it. I've lived it. But can I say, and I'll, I'll tell you one way to really change a habit is to change your environment. So for mm. a lot of my people, I'll say like, hey, is there another place you could watch TV? Could you watch it upstairs? By creating a small barrier between yourself and food, you're going to not go all the way down the stairs and get that food and take it back and eat it in your bed, right? That small change of environment, that move that you make, then you do that night after night. And I'll tell you, changing behavior, changing habits is very painful and very difficult. And no one talks about this. I have a, a whole thing that I came through with the book because I, I do it myself. And, and I think that that's the other mistake is that habits are like whack-a-mole. Remember that like carnival game where you have to like keep whacking yeah. the mole, right? <laughs> like just when you get one under control, an old one comes back because our habits mm. are embedded in this neural, neural pathways in the back of our brain. So there are times where I still find myself in that, that pantry, like totally eating the chocolate chips, like in a daze of habit formation, right? Because those, they live there, but I'm good enough to get myself out of that now. Um, I just want people to understand that there is an 
entire emotional um, stages of habit change. And you will find yourself angry. Oh, you'll be like, that Liz, why she's making me do this? I cannot stand her. I'm not doing it. You'll get petulant like a child. You'll get sad about the loss of your habit. You will get anxious you will get then you'll get elated because you did it one night and can you do it the next night i'm not sure yeah. but i just want people to know that they're that i think people when they feel emotional about this process they think that means that something's wrong i always say it's all right and that for many of us who over ate for many years of our lives we've been soothing emotion with food so when feelings pop up we're not happy about it we don't even know what they are so we rush back to that food to kind of calm and soothe ourselves it's almost like you you go back to your security blanket and habits are a security blanket. You have to understand that your brain doesn't want to think. Your brain wants to save decisions for important decisions, right? So we they estimate we actually make 200 food decisions a day at this point in, in our environment. Maybe even more now that COVID's come along um, because we're home and we're around food so often. If we ha- we only have a finite number of decisions we can make in a day. So the brain, in order to not make decisions, like I can't decide every day how I'm going to wash my hair. Like if I had to do that, like I would really be I mean, wasting decisions. So habits are these wonderful things that keep us from having to make decisions. It's up to you how you build them, right? And you're talking really clearly about having built you know, I get at my sleep, I get up on time, and whatever we repeatedly do, we will become. So it's about mm. thinking about what am I consciously building right now, and how do I consistently build it? And you don't need to be perfect. I always say it to everybody, just give me a B. I don't want your A. <sighs> it's just so boring. I don't like perfect people. I don't want to hang out with you. I don't want to know you. I want B. <laughs> like... You will lose weight, you'll be a happy person, you'll have a glass of wine, you'll have some chocolate, and you'll lose weight, and you'll be fun. What did you say? You don't, I, I, I don't say, give, give me a, a B. B. I don't want an A, I give don't even me want to B. know those A people, honestly. <laughs> like, seriously, how boring. I don't want... Like, all my that friends in school, so... we all got Bs, because we were, like, out having fun and, like, living a life, and, you know, I like B people. I love it. And it's enough. It's enough. It's enough. enough. It's, you know, I think it kind of goes in line with, and some other people have their own percentages. I say 85% healthy, 15% fun, because I can sustain a fun lifestyle. When I go on vacation with Scott, I want to have the drinks at the pool, but I also get up in the morning, I work out, I have a great workout, I have a great breakfast, but when I go to the pool, I actually eat pretty healthy. But the drinks are flowing. Okay. I love it. I mean, that's it. Like, I'm a wino. I'm not giving it up. Like, a complete wino. I've had to learn to manage it. You know, on a Monday night, I'm not drinking wine. But, like, I've had to habitualize good patterns around it. But I don't go on vacation to lose weight. Like, I can lose weight Mm. any time of the year. You know? Come on, Liz. Yeah. I like you. When we hanging out. I know. I'm coming to the pool with you. (laughs) Yes. So, speaking of bees, though, I, I can talk about that all day. But speaking of bees, I'm going to use it for the word building. So when we come back from our quick commercial break, we're going to talk about how you build the bodies of celebrities and how they are the same as every other person. We'll be right back. All right, we are back. I'm having such a fun conversation with Liz. She is making me feel very good about myself and the way that I follow my nutrition plans and the way that I'm forming the habits in my life. But Liz, I think a lot of people like to get on the inside on celebrities and I've trained a couple myself, but I'm kind of more interested in what you have. Now, you don't have to give names or or you can because I think the celebrities that you train people respect and they know that they really pushed hard on their journey. Is there anything you learn from helping the celebrities build their confidence and, and lose weight? Is there anything that you learned that you even carry with you uh, throughout the day or into your other counseling sessions? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think number one I would say is like, you know, the one thing that I have learned is that every single person is a universe, right? Mm. They have so many inputs 
from the time they're born to to where they grew up to um, who their family is. And I think about that and how important, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about Jennifer Hudson, who I helped. Um, and not only did I help Jennifer, but I saw how close she was with her family. And I realized that if I only helped Jennifer and she had to go to family reunions and family parties and be with her sister and, and you know, all these people all the time, that if they didn't also get on the journey, we were going to be in trouble. So I, that was a huge learning for me about what support systems in your life mean. So when mm-hmm. we were working together behind the scenes, we ended up on Oprah for this. We actually, behind the scenes, I was helping Jennifer, but behind the scenes, I would fly. She has a very, very large family. I would fly to Chicago one week, then Mississippi the next week, and Indiana the next week. And we would help over 200 of her family members, extended family, lose almost 2,000 pounds together. Wow. Yeah. And you can't imagine how much fun this turned into. We had these texts flying back and forth, and then they started competing with one another. And then, you know, we'd show up at a family reunion, and we'd do a little red carpet fun thing. And what it did was it made Jennifer feel like she wasn't alone in this journey, and Mm. that she wasn't doing this because... And she never did. I have to be honest. She never did it because she felt that she was um, unattractive or unworthy. And and that's what I loved the most about her was this was all about education for her. It was all about like, wow, I didn't really know that. And um, Jennifer is one of those people who... You know, she was. She still to this day, she says, like, really? All I have to do it to look like this is pay attention to what I'm eating and take care of myself. Like, she's like, I didn't know these things or I would have done them mm. sooner. It's, it's really not, um, it, it's about caring about yourself and putting yourself in that position. So I think support systems, whether you get them, you know, I run groups because the group support is so important or your family so or your husband or, you know, when I work with people and their husband isn't on board, it's really a difficult thing or when they're, you know, they don't have anyone to support them. I think that's huge. So, so support, I would say, uh, really was exemplified through Jennifer's journey. You use three words that I think, I don't know, maybe you can use this in your next book or something, but you use universe, weight loss, and fun. Like it's like the university of weight loss and fun, UWF. Like let's all go to <laughs> UWF. <laughs> yeah, steal it. I think, there, because one of the things that I was going to ask you, which you answered, is how do you, I say a lot of times, you know, fit doesn't have a size, it has a mentality, and you know, who cares about the number? And, and trying to almost get people to not think about the fact that they're losing weight and think about the fact that they're healthy, but you actually just answered that by saying what Jennifer said, which is, I just have to pay attention and, you know, take care of myself and, and choose these things that are going to make me feel better. But I just I just find it to be incredible how you're able to bring the weight loss and fun aspect to it. Um, oh, my gosh. Like I'm, I'm kind of just like, wow, like, that's really cool. Because for me, obviously, I've helped people lose weight. Not in this way. You do it in a really great way. You also said consistency. You said a little bit ago consistency or if you kind of eat this way over time you're going to get the reason i say consistency over time gets you results and you basically have proved that if you do the eating after dinner over time you're not going to get the results which you've trained i say trained jennifer's brain to say well let me be consistent over time and paying attention and i'm going to go a little bit deeper into that because i think that Someone who's listening, who doesn't have the support, like you said, and I get a lot of times where if my husband doesn't or my wife doesn't support it, you know, how do you train them to be consistent and how do you help them have fun, you know, even if they're in a group online, right? How, how do they manage this alone when the group is gone or when there's no post available? Yeah. Well, and I, I do love communities. Like I love the community that you've created and the voice that you've created. It's loving, it's kind, but it also says you are capable of more than you know. And I say that Mm. all the time to people, they are capable of so much more than they give themselves credit for. Um, I think when you are in a situation where you don't have that support, I think finding your community is going to be key and there are ways to do that. 
I also think really understanding habits. Um, habits are just a really simple loop of three things. There's a trigger, something that triggers your routine. And from that routine, there is a reward that you get. So I, when I'm telling people, you know, if they don't have that support system, rely on your triggers, right? Use external things to remind you, hey, go upstairs because you won't remember. You'll go to the couch. And I, I'd say like, well, when are you kind of sitting on the couch each night? And it's all oh, around 830. So we set an alarm on their phone that says, hey, go upstairs for TV tonight or take a bath instead or... Sometimes I move furniture to create this sense of su- of this surprise of like you sit down and where you would normally put your snack to eat at night, it's not there and it gets your attention. And all of a sudden you're supporting yourself in your own journey where you're saying, okay, hey self, I know you're not going to remember this because it's our habit to sit on that couch and it's our habit to eat after dinner and it feels really good. But hey, how can I send myself a little love note for later in the day to remind myself why I'm doing or what I'm doing to achieve what I want? So it's a little bit of of learning to, and and I, I will always say at the core of all of this, it's learning to love yourself and learning to care for yourself the way that you care for others. You would do that for a loved one. If you knew that they needed to stop eating after dinner, you would support them in any way, shape, or form you could. You wouldn't bring the snacks in the house. You'd sit upstairs with them. But when it's for ourselves, sometimes we don't love ourselves enough or we haven't been able to yet. And I think these little little notes, these little wins, these little thinking of this in a different way of like, this isn't about me being bad or, or wrong. This is about me being set up correctly and about taking care of myself. Where can people find you and how do they get a piece of your motivation, inspiration and direction every day to help them, you know, be in a, a really great wellness space? Well, you can find me at lizjosephsburg.com. You can find me on pretty much every social media platform at lizjosephsburg. You can kind of see my book behind me. It's called Target 100. So my name is really hard to spell. It's got this crazy F-S-B-E-R-G. So people sometimes can't find me. But target100program.com is uh, my kind of platform for my book. Um, And that is um, actually, interestingly, because support is so important and we're talking about it, I actually wrote into the book a 10-week program for you to do as a book club with friends. And family, because I saw the impact of that. So, you know, it is, there is a program in there to walk you through healthy habit formation. It taught, you know, Target 100 was born out of, as I say, deep research for, gosh, now 17 years in, you know, this industry, hundreds of pounds lost myself. And it's really around these simple pillars of 100 grams of carbs a day, 100 ounces of water, 100 minutes of movement per week, 100 minutes of exercise per week, 100 extra minutes of sleep, and 100 minutes of stress relief. So you can kind of find uh, me there at Target 100 uh, program or Target 100 uh, by Liz Josephsburg all over social media. So however you want to connect, I will be standing by uh, to welcome you into just a really, really warm community, very much like the one that you've created. It's really great. You're helping them build consistency and habits. That's really amazing. I love to ask my guests um, their definition of trust and believe and how people out there can help themselves trust and believe in who they are. I think I would say um, trust and believe in yourself that you are, you, there, there isn't anything wrong with you. There's everything right with you. And even when you have done something that you think, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of this example of, of a woman I spoke with yesterday, and she's been in my program. She's had a lot of success, and she hit a rough patch as we came into the fall. And she, you know, people underestimate seasonal changes for changes to their food intake, changes to light, changes to sleep patterns, changes to exercise. They underestimate and often they falter and she was faltering and she said oh god I just I just was doing so well and now it just seems like I'm sabotaging myself and I stopped her right there and I was like wait a minute what are you talking about who's that mean girl that just popped out of your mouth like Mm. you didn't go out there to try to sabotage yourself 
you went out and guess what? The light changed and you you needed a new type of walking and you needed to think about warmer foods for lunch instead of, you know, you're not really interested in salads as it gets cold and you weren't doing anything to hurt yourself. So I want people to trust and believe in themselves that you're not trying to hurt yourself. You're not doing anything wrong. You're working your way through things. Take that language away of you being broken, you sabotaging yourself, you not being good enough or right enough. You're on a journey wherever you are is a-okay and it's where you're meant to be and the universe has your back. It'll put you where you need to be. Mic drop, everybody. There you have it from Liz Josephsberg. Liz, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I know we had a lot of correspondence back and forth. It's been a long time waiting. I'm going to send Ibru a message and tell her how fantastic it was speaking to you. Thank you, Liz. This has been a dream come true for me to be able to have this conversation with you. Uh, oh. You have been in my phone, in my living room. You've been everywhere. Uh, you just didn't know it. And you are such an inspiration to me. Thank you for oh. helping me uh, achieve a lot of my goals and inspiring and motivating me as well. <laughs> 